Welcome back to The Dish. Early week hiatus, but got some good races to talk about, both that have happened and will happen. And with me to dish about it all, think Saratoga, is the Paddock Prince himself, David Levitch and Prince. It's been a tumultuous meet to start. DQs, non-DQs, Linda Rice winning everything, short fields. It's still Saratoga, but it feels like they're due for maybe a, a better run than what we've seen so far. Yeah, the stakes fields have been very light horse-wise. The Honorable Miss had four. The Shoe V had four. Um, countless races with Chad Brown having four out of five or <laughs> five out of eight. So it's been a rough start um, field size-wise in stakes races. The stewards have been about as inconsistent as possible. So hopefully they change a little bit. Um, yeah, I've I was looking at um, Sunday, Saturday, and Sunday's cards. They're really good. So hopefully um, the stakes race, the Jim Daniel has five. The Vanderbilt did get seven if they all hold in. So I think seven on the dirt at Saratoga these days, that's a, um, whew, that's like having 20 in a race. What's more frustrating to you, uh, inconsistent stewards, short fields, or Linda Rice winning everything? I would say Linda Rice winning everything <laughs> because the horses she wins with, it's not that she's like getting them from like, I mean, she'll get an Asmussen or a Pletcher or somebody and it just, they just keep improving and they show up every time. And they just keep running when they don't, when they look like they're done. She's hard to predict right now. Obviously she's not hard to predict because she's winning about 35% of the time, but all three of those things combined, hopefully it can get better. Um, I guess Linda Rice will um, have a regression to the mean at some point, but you would we'll think. Speak. We'll see. That's the tough part. You know, on one hand, if you can't beat them, join them. And she certainly has a great ROI this meet. Uh, but at the same time, you would expect that A, the public's going to catch up with that. So the value disappears. And B, you know, cycle wise, she can't win everything. But I will say she was very active at the claim box in Kentucky, as you know. She has won with some of those horses. So. I, I mean, I hate to just, you know, I know other people think nefarious things are in play, but it's pretty clear from what we saw in terms of her doings in Kentucky that she was pointing a stable for this meet. Not that other horsemen and women don't, but it, it makes sense that she would be on this tear, given the claiming activity. And if it continues the whole meet, then it's really frustrating. But as of right now, I have tried to beat her and I've lost, but I'm just going to have to keep trying. Yeah, I mean, she has won the last four Naira titles and talking about Aqueduct, Aqueduct, and then um, Belmont. So it's like she's been on this huge run since pretty much since the year started. In all seriousness, no, I think the stewards have been the um, most inconsistent part of the Saratoga meet. I don't know how there was not a disqualification in the last race <laughs> on Wednesday. Um, there was just a very controversial decision on Thursday that looked way, way less than what was not taken down on Wednesday in the last race. So maybe some consistency um, compared to what Del Mar takes down in other different jurisdictions. But the one last weekend on Sunday at Del Mar was they barely even touched each other and the horse came down. Saratoga, there was a cutoff and nothing. So it's just it's hard to predict as a gambler. No, it's frustrating. And, you know, we could say, oh, well, the, the letter of the law in each state is different and each state regulates racing in a different way. And I get that, but as better as, you know, we don't change how, how we play state to state. Uh, and especially if you're a weekend warrior and you get pumped up for Saratoga and Del Mar and see these big differences and how the racing's adjudicated, it's very frustrating for sure. And uh, it's definitely something I'd like to see improve. Uh, not anything we're going to be able to uh, affect, unfortunately, but we can help people affect their bankroll. And I do think the Jim Dandy is a great opportunity. Normally, I don't love to get to overly excited about five horse fields. But as we can see from my fair odds that I'm about to bring up and you and I can uh, disagree over disarm, I think there's opportunity here because I think I'm going to get the three to one I want on Saudi crown. I do think Angel Vampire will be a shorter price. And I think disarm is going to be a much shorter price than my fair odds of him being the longest shot. Uh, he's the slowest horse on rags by far. So it is a short field. Forte does look tough, but I do think there's some opportunity here. Yeah, we're going to have – I think Forte is a very likely winner of this race. I know he's getting blinkers on, and that's kind of interesting in a big race, but I guess – he worked well in him. It looked like I read said it really made a difference. We are going to really disagree on disarm here. I think disarm 
I'm going to play the cold 2-1 in here. I really like the way Disarm is. They kind of rushed him into the Lexington to get him into the Derby. He ran a good fourth. The game some time. Got the Matt win, win um, at Ellis Park on a track that was really speed favoring a whole meet for the most part. He closed well. I think he's a horse. Asmussen's obviously a Hall of Fame trainer. He's really good at progressing horses. I think this is a horse that can really – I don't know in the Brad Cox of the three. I don't know which one I – I guess Saudi crown, Saudi crown is the speed. So people are going to play him. I worry about the distance a little. I don't know how good angel of empire really is. Um, I know he ran third in the Derby, but that was a hot pace and then hit show. He's, I, I don't know. I don't, he's kind of what he is too. So I think I'd rather take the likely winner and Forte and then try to get some value underneath with a horse that looks like he's improving. I know buyer wise he's improving, but the um, sheets you said he was not improving. Or not yeah. not in the same in the same realm of the other horses, right? I agree with uh, the approach for sure. I, you know, obviously, I disagree as we already said on who the alternatives are. Uh, Angel of Empire, I agree with you completely. Uh, you know, I was against him in the Derby, and as the favorite, I was like, man, I can't play this horse. He was fine. It was a fine third. It was okay, but you know, I thought this arm ran well in the Derby. Hit show was you know a little cagey and ended up being my Belmont pick. Uh, even over tap at Trice, who I ran it back in the Haskell, unfortunately. I do like Hit Show, though, and uh, would invite you to maybe a head, head-to-head head for a Chipotle. Yeah, any. I thought you were going to say Skyline head-to-head, head, anything. No, I Skyline, know you don't like so Skyline. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good with this head-to-head head bet. All right, you have Disarm, I have Hit Show. And would you say it's fair that if either Forte or Angel of Empire, probably the Travers' favorite? If Forte wins, obviously it's an automatic. If Angel of Empire wins, I don't think he would be the trash. No, okay, because we still have Archangelo, which the layoff to me is going to keep him from being favored unless there's chaos. And you still have Mage. And then there's Mage, who I thought ran great in the Haskell to be second, which they said it was a prep, so that lines up with that. The other thing is, too, whoever Javier picks, people are not going to bet the other one and thinking probably, oh, Javier picked this one. Yes. You know, if he takes Mage, they're really not going to bet Archangelo off the layoff and Javier not picking. Now, if he picks Archangelo, they're going to be like, oh, well, Mage, Bob, you know what I'm saying. So I think that will affect their odds in the Travers. Absolutely. But- I mean, if Forte wins or loses by a whisker, I think he's the automatic favorite in the Travers, just because of his rep. Not saying he deserves to be, but uh, unless he wins impressively in the Dandy, I think he's an automatic favorite going into the um, Travers. All right. Well, that is a few weeks away. But first, uh, the Dandy and also the Vanderbilt on the undercard. I don't have fair odds for that. Uh, But to me, it's a two-horse race. It looks like a two horse race to me. It's got the seven, won seven races in a row, elite power, reigning Breeders' Cup champ, who beat Gunite fair and square in Saudi. Gunite came back with that massive figure at Churchill of 108. So I think he has a little more pace advantage on elite power, but elite power is just one of those horses. I don't really know if pace affects him. He just always seems like he shows up and runs horses down. So if somebody else wins that race, it would be a big shock, I think, to many people. I don't, and there's the other horses in there just look like, just way off compared to what the top two are. No, uh, I agree there. Uh, it seems like one of them has to run the race. It's not quite as overmatched as the Chouvet was with Nest and Clarier. They're not to that, that level where they're going to have 95% plus of the pool, but it is one of those two for me. And then that's race eight. Race 10 is the Dandy, and I'm with the uh, Saudi Crown and Hit Show. Uh, Forte, I would just let be. I think he might be even money, so... Yeah, I don't know how they're going to bet this race because I saw um, I saw Disarm was six to one. I think he's going to be lower than that, but maybe people will look at the things you look at. I think Forte will probably be six to five, even money, just based on who he is and Irad. And I don't know how they're going to bet the Cox horses. I really don't. I don't know. I don't know because Saudi Crown has such a pace advantage. They might go guns blazing for him off that. And he's getting weight, uh, which I, I the pounds. other point you made, I really agree with with Saudi Crown. I like the pace advantage. I like that he's getting weight. This seems to be the the distance limit, though. Uh, if he wins impressively and they go onto the Travers, I'd have some serious ten furlong questions. So I don't mind to see him run well, but uh, this to me seems like the limit. Yeah, this seems like a race. If he was ever going to steal it on the lead, it would be this one, just based on how much he could be easily controlling in here. If he did steal the race, I would agree with you. I don't think I would be going for him at 10 furlongs, um, unless he just showed us something we obviously don't think he can do. But, yeah, I agree with you on that front. 
Right. Well, the dirt mile is always uh, looming boldly uh, out west this year. Brutus it's a great cop out. Two turn dirt mile, so that uh, that that could be in some people's minds, but obviously uh, not for the Travers hopeful. So Jim Dandy this weekend, Whitney next weekend, right? Correct. Yeah, you got Cody's yeah. wish. You'll be there. No, I'm not going this year. Oh, you're I'm not going. Okay. No, nope, backing out. Not going anymore this year. All right. But well, honestly, if, you know, in the land of Goshen out here, feels like <laughs> the spa. It's about 300 degrees. It feels like out here. So I guess I should have just gone. It was it was a sauna this morning. Uh, downtown isn't quite as humid for whatever reason, but yeah, it it's sticky. It's it's brutal, but. I don't know the weather. I don't know how the weather's been at Saratoga heat wise. I haven't seen many people complaining about it, so I guess it's been fine so far. All right. Well, well, they they have a lot of other stuff to complain about, like the stewards and Linda Rice. <laughs> Plenty of complaints uh, among race goers as usual, but uh, it's it's still Saratoga. And look, short fields are not seeing Nest come back. That was impressive. Uh, I thought Wet Paint, who I didn't like at all, but you know that. That was good to see. Um, I'm not good to see because it didn't better, but she ran well. Like she earned the grade one there to reel in the the pace. So, yeah, the three year old Philly division is brutal, no, but it was nice to see Ness come back. Um, you know, it's yeah. funny because everybody Ness was, was awesome. so, yeah, and everybody was like she had a pace advantage. Well, Claire Air has been running down every single horse with pace advantage or not, and Claire Air really wasn't that far behind Ness early in that race. It was a length, length and a half, not that far off, and. I mean, I guess she could turn the tables in the um, personal instant, but the way Ness ran off the Good. layoff like that, I don't know. She just looks like she might even be a better horse this year. No, I, I agree, and I wouldn't be surprised to see her against males. Um, just they did it last year, and, you know, they'll they'll look for the right spot, but she's awesome. I mean, what's what do you got to lose? You'll be running against three males. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good point. point too. And they, I mean, there's a mile and a half when they tried it last time. So you get a race like the, uh, I said the Gold Cup when we were talking earlier, but I forgot they they flipped it. Woodward, so, you know, the Woodward. I guess that's one turn. Maybe they'd want something a little longer. No, it's two turns because it's at um, Bach. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's usually one turn at Belmont, but they go Bach. Back to yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that fits. I could see that. It's so hopefully a, a good fall, but. Before that, the Jim Dandy, they got the, the right five, I would say, is, as much as I hate these short fields, but pretty stacked. And you're with the champ, Forte. Going the Forte disarm, cold exacta, disarm over, hit show for Chipotle. All right. Lots, lots of action. I like it. Well, we'll dish next week for the Whitney. What a great race to talk about. We'll recap the Dandy as well. He's the Paddock Prince. Get his stuff. Picks.horseracingnation.com. Good luck.